Hi YouTube, my name's JR. I just built the gasifier so I want to post a video of it. Uh, gasifier basically uses wood fuel to create a smoke or a vapor that you can then use in a generator or an internal combustion engine. So I'm going to start it and get it going and warming up and then explain everything to you as it's warming up and hopefully I can start my generator on it once it's all going. This is just rolled up newspaper. What it's doing right now is it has a blower motor attached to it that's pulling air through everything. And so as I lit that newspaper, it's drawing that flame into this tube and igniting the fuel that's, that's in the fire tube from the top here. Now hopefully what the goal is, is that'll ignite the fuel inside here, uh, which is in a, in a four inch diameter pipe that goes down into here, and then there's a basket at the bottom holding that fuel. All that I'm using is wood pellets for a wood pellet stove. They tend to burn pretty clean, and they work pretty well. Okay, so that's got, uh, that's got the fuel lit in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cap off my ignition port. And now the only oxygen that's coming into the system is through the tube that the fuel is in. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll grab the camera and I'll kind of explain to you what these different uh, pieces are of the gasifier. So this main, this main unit is a 30 gallon barrel that I have and what it has is it has a uh, 4 inch tube welded into the top there that then goes down about 18 inches, 16 or 18 inches into this unit and then what it does is it, uh, like I said, it's, it's burning in there. This front piece is just, in a, uh, just a clean out port, it's got a, a gasket around it and then this is a shaker assembly. This handle goes in through this tube and interlocks to the basket so you can shake it and loosen up any charcoal and get rid of the old stuff before you light it with new fuel. I got all of these uh, plans and everything uh, from the FEMA booklet. Uh, if you want those, those instructions, they're free on the internet. You can just Google FEMA gasifier and uh, you can download it. I think it's like 85 or 95 pages worth of material. It's pretty long, but uh, it's, it's well worth reading. Uh, a lot of the stuff I did, I did completely based off of those plans and based off of some ideas that I saw off of fellow uh, YouTube gasifier people. So what's going on now is, is that burn that's going on in this main container is uh, the smoke is being drawn through this pipe then I have a rubber coupler into this unit right here which is an old Freon canister and what it does is it's a cyclone filter this this is the inlet pipe and this is the outlet pipe right here this outlet pipe goes through the top of this canister all the way into about two inches off the bottom so what it's doing is it's drawing the smoke in that smoke is in theory spiraling around that uh, outlet pipe and it's depositing a lot of the, of the water vapor and creosote and tar onto the sides of this canister which then drip down into this drain into this pickle jar that I have here. 
And so what I can do, so everything's still airtight. I have, uh, if anything's been mated up together without welding, I've used uh, high temperature silicone to seal those uh, cracks and, and, and gaps so that everything here is airtight. So no oxygen is getting into the system at any time other than through the fire tube up here. And that's where it's supposed to get the air. So once it goes through this, the cyclone filter, it's pulled up through here. There's another rubber coupler. And then it comes down this, this pipe right here, down to the very bottom of this uh, big ammo can that I have. This was an ammo can that had a uh, detonation cord in it. So it's pretty big. I chose an ammo can because it has the rubber seal, the rubber gasket all the way along the top. And uh, it's designed to be air and water tight. So this comes in through the bottom right there at the bottom and then right above it I have uh, in the inside I have angle iron welded to the sides here and that angle iron supports a screen which sits on that on, on that iron and then that screen holds uh, an entire uh, uh, box full of uh, sawdust essentially it's just like the cedar or the pine shavings that you get at like a pet store for your hamster so this thing's full of sawdust which, which acts as a media filter for uh, cleaning out a lot of the other impurities uh, that's in the smoke. Now, what happens next is that it's drawn up through this pipe right here, this outlet pipe, and it comes through here to this. This is just a 12 volt camping uh, air mattress pump essentially. And I have it, it's, it's kind of bad. It's just wired right now to a little potentiometer or a rheostat that I got at uh, Radio Shack. I ordered a bigger one because this one can't handle the amount of watts that this needs. Um, so it gets really hot really fast. But essentially all that is, is that's connected to a 12 volt battery in my car. So that's going and I can adjust, I can adjust how fast it goes based on what it needs because when you first start it up uh, it needs uh, it doesn't need a whole lot of of air being sucked through it it only needs a little bit to get it going and then you can slowly increase the amount of air that you're pulling through it okay and then that just comes up to this little torch like thing and uh, that's just so that you can so that the the vapors can exit and you can eventually light the smoke that's coming out of here right now. It's just, it's just air. It just feels like smoke, uh, cool smoke at least. And so I can eventually light this. And once I can light this and it stays lit, then I know that I'm I'm able to turn on this valve, which then goes over to a uh, manifold that I bolted right up to my carburetor on my generator. Now there's absolutely no gas tank on this generator right now. Actually right here is where the gas line usually connects. So you can see there's absolutely no gas. There Usually there's a gas tank that sits right on top. It's completely gone. I drained the float bowl so that I know there's absolutely no gas in there. And I have these uh, marked exactly where they need to be. This is the fresh air and this is the vapor. So uh, there, you, you do need to control the air to fuel ratio in here because obviously it's not doing that through the jets and everything that it's designed for. So eventually, and it's a little breezy out today, I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, but there is some smoke coming out. I wonder if you can see that up against my house. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but anyways. So, and it's, and the barrel's getting warm to the touch. So usually it's getting a little hot Usually this is about the time when I test out my uh, the fumes that are coming out of the out of the torch. Okay, and what I can normally do is I can just light it, and they're staying lit, but not for very long. So it's almost there, and you can't see it, unfortunately, for some reason. It's a very invisible flame. You can only see it when it's dark outside. But we'll give this just a few more seconds to go and then it'll be uh, ready to turn on the generator and fire that baby up. 
So basically what I have coming is I ordered, I found on Amazon a rheostat that'll handle, uh, I think it's 25 watts, which is what this will take. This is a 12 volt motor. It draws at, at most two amps. So that's uh, 24 watts maximum rated power. So I bought a 25 watt, I think it's a 20, 20 or 25 ohm rheostat. So it should be able to drop the voltage to about a volt and a half or all the way up to 12 volts. If at 12 volts, this sucker really pumps out a lot of air. And actually I tried to start this thing with it on full blast and it actually, uh, it got too hot in the barrel and kind of backfired and belched up all the wood fuel out the top and put itself out. So that was kind of not a good idea to do. Okay, so I just lit the torch. Don't know if you can see the heat coming off of it, um, but it's, it's staying lit. So that's telling me that we're ready to go and we can start up the generator, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna leave the fan on for just a minute, but I'm gonna open this one right here. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna make sure my motor's on. I'm just gonna spray a little bit of starting fluid and this should be able to pull it. Turn off my fan and close that port. And this thing. Look at that, we're running on wood. And what's strange is the exhaust that comes out of my generator just smells like a campfire. It's kind of funny. So it took me a little while. It took me a little while to get the uh, oxygen setting right on there, and it's not entirely perfect yet. I still have to tweak it just a little bit to figure out the air to fuel ratio, but it works. It's running my generator, and if I'm good enough, plug in my saw. Let's see if I can kill it. So there you got it. I'm running my generator completely on the vapors that are produced by this gasifier. I'll put up some pictures of what the inside of this looks like as far as the basket and the shaker assembly and the fire tube that's going down into it. But you can already see that it's used up a little bit of these pellets. You can kind of start to see the, the fire tube there. But basically that's it. All in all, I used a lot of uh, recycled material for this, obviously a, a Freon canister and an old 30 gallon drum and an and a ammo box from the Korean War, I think. Um, but overall, I did end up spending probably close to about $300, give or take, on pipe, pipe fittings, all the different, I mean, I have uh, at least four of these uh, ball valves to control where the vapors going in through all this and through that uh, manifold there. But that should give you a pretty good idea on how a gasifier operates. Now obviously, once that was going, I turned off the fan because this was getting screaming hot, but also because uh, you don't you don't want to overload your gasifier. The size of the size of your gasifier dictates how how big of a motor you can run off of it. On the FEMA plans, they actually have um, a graph that tells you the horsepower of your engine, um, what size of fire tube you need, and uh, all that fun stuff. And so this is only a 7.8 horsepower motor. 
and su supposedly a four inch fire tube like this can handle up to 15 horses. Um, I kind of, I kind of don't believe it because this thing gets really hot running just that eight horse, eight horsepower motor. So I would almost say if you're going to go with a larger motor, you need to kind of over engineer it and go with the step up. I think the next step was a six inch tube and that would handle up to a 30 horsepower motor, which if I was doing anything eight horse or over eight horse, I would probably use a six inch tube just to try to keep the heat down because the cooler you can run it, Obviously, I've used rubber couplers to isolate the heat going from this metal point to this metal point and the same here from here to here. Just for cooling purposes, the more you can cool the, 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 the smoke that's going through your gasifier, the more energy it contains once it gets to your motor. So if you're running really hot gas, not only is that going to start to compromise the material, the rubber couplers, the, saw chip, the sawdust, all that stuff, but it's also not going to contain as much energy for your generator. So the cooler you can get it, the better. That's why I recommend that if you're going to go with any uh, motor that's a little bit bigger than that, to just kind of go the next step up and, uh, and, and utilize uh, utilize the, the bigger fire tube, uh, that way it doesn't get as hot, you're not really running it at 100% full capacity. So this thing's getting pretty hot to the touch now, but as you can see, I mean, I've been running this now for a couple minutes and it's, and it's running pretty good there. And the fun thing for me is that it actually generates electricity. Pretty cool. All right, thanks, guys. Okay, here's a shot of the fire tube going down into the barrel before I welded the top on. You can see some supports there holding it in place. Also, down towards the bottom, there's the, there's the pipe that is the um, ignition port that uh, you uh, light it from. It goes all the way into and connects to uh, that fire tube. There's a hole there, and then it's welded around that. You can see the chains going down to the basket down there at the bottom. Um, now, in the FEMA plans, they tell you to use like a stainless steel bowl and to drill holes into it, uh, but really it's pretty flimsy looking to me, and so I really beefed it up. I used some quarter inch thick, uh, three inch flat stock, and, uh, and bent it around into a hoop, and then used uh, some half inch rebar and welded that grate onto the bottom of it, so it's really heavy duty. Uh, I'm not too afraid of that burning through anytime soon. Uh, the next shot just shows the basket itself, um, and how the chain connects onto it. Uh, I just used some quick links to uh, uh, get that chain around it. The chain is welded up top and I, uh, I used a tape measure and everything to make sure that it was level and as, as uh, plumb as possible. Uh, the next shot shows the inside of where the shaker assembly comes in and connects to the, uh, that basket. It has that, uh, that piece of quarter inch bar uh, that you can see the handle of on the outside of the barrel comes through that pipe um, out that cap and then is bent around uh, and interlocks with a hoop that's welded onto the actual basket. So when you use the shaker assembly on the outside, it uh, grabs that hoop and grabs that basket and moves it around so it empties all the uh, dead ash out of that basket and allows the fresh fuel to come in.